mustachioed Grant Baker. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. It's good seeing you tonight. I'm sorry my voice is a little hoarse today. I, I Something happened. I got into a, a place when I was working today, and, and the pollen just got me. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you had your vacuum uh, up to your mouth, and you were blowing your lips up. That's what I think was happening. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. 16 inches of mercury it, it's definitely it definitely can do some damage i'll tell you that <laughs> i bet i bet all right we have an interesting night tonight yeah for the ufo report and there's actually a lot of cool stories going on here man and you know where should we start Let, let's start with this mystery rocket that oh, allegedly yes. hit the moon what happened here dude oh man so actually nasa scientists had actually found this knew it was going to hit the moon so they were tracking this object and this was actually last year when it happened so they're watching this object and they're like okay we we can kind of see the trajectory of this and we think it's going to hit the moon sure enough it did it actually hit the far side of the moon it didn't even hit our side which is what's really interesting another really interesting part of it is is it left a double crater which overlaps each other so they they see this and i can't remember the actual name of the satellite that was able to take a picture of it but it's one that we have going around the moon that we can kind of map the moon and all that jazz so they got a picture of it in fact if you'd like i have one opened up if people want to see it so what's really interesting with this picture is you see right in the middle where the arrow's pointing two little like a figure eight laying on its side that is the crash site of this now the apollo 13 14 15 and 17 missions left craters that were similar to this but this one is unique because it's a double crater so when they were watching this rocket body so to speak and i did air quotes for anybody that can't see this when a rocket body hits the engines usually heavier than the other end of the rocket which is where the fuel was so now it's basically just an empty hollow space so when it hits it just leaves one crater because the heavier engine will hit the surface of the moon and bing bang bada bam you got a crater in this particular instance they believe that whatever hit the moon was heavy on both ends so nobody not us, not any other country is claiming that this is theirs. I don't even know why they call it a rocket body, to be honest with you, but nobody's claiming that it's theirs. So they're, you, they got scientists and NASA baffled on exactly what happened here or what it was. And uh, <laughs> I should quit reading the comments while I'm talking, but <laughs> the focus, uh, focus, yeah, focus. focus. But yeah, so they 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 got pictures of it. They said they know what it or knew what it was. They were able to, you know, know the trajectory of this thing and everything. But nobody's claiming it's theirs, so we have no idea why it left a double crater, except for the fact that scientists believe that both ends had to be heavy. Well, let me ask you this: if if we don't know, or there's not a country out there right now taking claim that it's theirs. How do we know we were even looking at a rocket? That is my question exactly. So when they said, you know, of course, this is NASA. And when they said they were looking at this, that they are able to look at other rocket bodies. They know where all that. And this that's when they caught wind of this thing. And they were looking at it through telescopes and whatever other sensors they have out there. And they that all they're saying to us is it's a rocket body. But then they're, you know, when it hit it hit on march 4th and so when it hit it did the double impact and they're just like oh that's odd and yet they released the photos of it and that is not indicative of a rocket you know we have a lot of space to read out there and and even it when if you read the article on it it says that a lot of space debris actually does hit the moon from time to time this one is just very unique and they don't understand why it did it and i don't think they even know if it was a rocket or not and you said how long have they been tracking this uh, they tracked it for quite a while before it hit i don't remember the actual time frame it was last year so i mean it was march 4th when it hit so that's obviously over three months at that point 
all it says and when i read it it said just last year they were tracking an object you know a rocket body going through space they calculated the trajectory said it was going to hit the moon and sure enough it did and this is the pictures we got yet they're baffled of where it came from pretty much everything up there i mean if you look up all the space debris they know 99.9 percent .9 of what that debris is they know where it is they're watching it on a daily basis you know they're they're waiting for the perfect window to make launches and they know what these things are so for them to say and, oh yeah and sorry for cutting you off there but i mean the united states with the most sophisticated spying system in the world knows everything that is shot into space Mm -hmm. They even know what type of satellites the Russians are sending up, the Chinese are sending up. So the fact that they are playing dumb on this yes. tells me two things. Number one, it's either American, yeah, because that's the only thing you can play dumb on. Or number two, it's something completely different. So I'm leaning towards it's something completely different. I think what it ended up happening is no one's going to fire a rocket, spend the fuel, and then go up, refuel it, and let it run into the into the moon. I mean, it, it was heavy on both sides, so it's obviously not a rocket body. They're hiding something, and whoever's playing dumb, whether it be the United States, they're pretty good at it. And, I mean, even NASA says, it. oh, how'd they put it? They don't know the origins of, of the of of what hit and the and the way it made the double craters but it may indicate its identity and the thing is is nasa doesn't say anything more than that about what it was okay so could be alien could be earthly could be something else another mini omuamua oh yeah it could be anything but i mean these are that is such a BS excuse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot buy that. Cannot buy that at all. When when they know when the Chinese or the Russians through their spies mm -hmm. are sending up military spy satellites or or spy uh, or weaponry for space to shoot down other satellites, they know. They I mean, know hey, but on the flip side, this may be something from the secret space program as well mm -hmm. that lost control and crashed into the moon. Could be something like that. You know, it's really interesting with that is though it crashed on the far side of the moon and not very many people besides, you know, the American government or any other government that has the proper sensors and technology that are going to be able to see this and know that it hit on the far side of the moon. I mean, if it was something that was, you know where i'm trying to go with this why would they even have to tell us why give us that little breadcrumb when not too many people have the ability to see something like that let alone know that it's going to hit the moon and then all of a sudden these pictures come out and so it's it's kind of like oh we screwed up but hey let's just make it maybe false information just look this way while we're doing this over here you know one of those deals well, the craters are pretty big. The one yes, is 19 and a half yards. The second one, which is smaller, is 17 and a half yards. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty big. It's a very large crater. It, it really is. And they were saying that the 13, 14, 15, and 17 Apollo missions left similar sized craters. In fact, I think some of theirs was actually a little bigger. So it, it just depends on... It's a ship size. We'll, we'll put it like that. It can be a rocket size too, but it's got to be a pretty lengthy rocket to make those kind of divots, especially out there on in, in that area. I guess this is one of those that we're going to put up for debate. So much for NASA transparency. <laughs> we're going to get into this UFOs. We're going to find out another black mark for NASA. These people know every launch that happens on this planet mm -hmm. they know and they well, especially know when it's russia or china 
Oh, and there aren't a lot of countries on this planet that are sending rockets into space. Let's Google that for a second. How many countries launch rockets into space? China, Let's see here. Russia, America. There are 42 countries. Yep. There right. are 42 countries. All right. So let's see here. Canada, the United States, Mexico, mm-hmm. Cuba. Mm-hmm. Uh, portions of, here we go. Soviet Union or Russia, United States, Czech Republic, Poland, East Germany did, Bulgaria has, Hungary has, Vietnam, really? Wow, never would have expected that one. I think that only happened once in July 1980. All right. So 42 countries have launched uh, rockets into space. And we know every single every single ounce of everything that's up there. We know because they have to have special windows in order to get a find an opening to get through the mess and the clutter that could take things out or take out a rocket. Yep. This is why the international space station every now and again has to dodge little pieces of garbage that are up there. It's a garbage dump. Yeah, and all of them moving at like 20,000 miles an hour (laughs) or 17,000. I hear you. Just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. You know, and I, I, I realize the easy thing is to say, don't trust NASA. But realistically, the comments that they've been making over the last three, four months about extraterrestrials and getting into the ufo game and acting shocked that there's uap flying around in the sky can we really really buy anything that nasa even says anymore i mean they are the great space hoaxers yep i 100 percent agree and the fact that they're trying to play you know the fool and being like oh wow this stuff really exists come on man if you watch, and there's plenty of people out there that take all their videos that have been live, and every time something comes into the frame that shouldn't be there, bam, they're off air that quick. And then a few minutes later, it passes. They come back on air. Oh, technical difficulties. Give me a break, man. They know what Give there. Grant and his mustache a break. <laughs> That's two breaks right there. Grant Baker is with us for the ufo report tonight and we are going to continue right after this when we get back the united states navy did they accidentally release unredacted ufo files revealing drones yep. we'll get into it with the mustachioed grant baker when we return on space out radio for the final half hour next All right, we clear. (laughs) I got to quickly record something here. Hold on. Uh, Where can I type this up? Uh, Right here. Right here. There. You know, glasses always make people look better, so. Nerds. (laughs) All right, hold on. Grant, I'm just going to need to mute yourself for a second. All right, coming down in three, two, one. Hi there, this is Dave Scott of Spaced Out Radio. Happy Canada Day to all of our listeners and friends of Saga 960. Have a safe holiday weekend. Is that 10 seconds? I'm going to bet you I'm short. Oh, that's 10 on the dot. Close enough. Boom. 
All right, you can unmute now. You know, you're so Hi there, this is Dave Scott of Spaced Out Radio. Happy Canada Day to all of our listeners and friends of Saga 960. Have a safe holiday weekend. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Jeanette Sanchez, what's up? Right. There we go. We can kill that now. We can get this off to transfer. Desktop. File. <coughs> hmm. Well, don't do that. I've been doing that all night. <laughs> Dave, maybe you just suck on a fisherman's friend. Yeah, it's coming right now. Thank you. Well, that was quick. That's already gone. Sweet Donnie Cho. ba 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 <laughs> good times never felt so good. I like Nani. He's a good guy. Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, come up with a second uh, second stanza to that one. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh my goodness! And filthy uh, drew one and started a little bitty one. Look at that. Well, he is an itsy bitsy teeny weeny. Wow, Dave. Edmund Tony and cartoon weenie. <laughs> well, I figured I'd start smart cards while I'm at it. Might as well. Uh, alien critter, my. On air sign is uh, is on. Just it gets covered up on my name tag here. That's what blocks it. So I literally have to figure out a way to like put it up here. But then you're not going to see it, so I have to do it here. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool if I could like put it right there. Can't even tell it's on. The batteries are so low. I've left, left that damn thing on so many nights. So I have a... Well, see, it just shut off. Here, let me see if I can get it in the frame and turn it back on. There you go. There's my owl. And yeah. it's actually connected to the USB in the back of my router. <laughs> I found yeah. one. Back there. Hey, there's Joseph Syracuse. How you doing, man? All right. We got like 30 seconds. Thank you to Sweet Donnie Cho, ba 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 ba, Eddie, Thomas, YJ, Simon, and D Cohen for the amazing super chats tonight. Very much appreciate your love and support. And thank you to everybody who gave us a thumbs up. Thank you to their new subscribers. Thank you to people who bought Grant's t shirt at our store, spacedoutradio.com. Here we go. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read Shirky Poo's Newswire. Check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. 
Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Grant is back for the UFO report, hanging on out with us, telling us about the U.S. Navy accidentally releasing files unredacted. Yes, unredacted files on accident. And boy, were they quick to get rid of them, man. They deleted those things as quick as they sent them. And uh, just for anybody that can't see, I love the shirt, Dave. Thank you so much. I was the first one that bought one, I hope. (laughs) I did it it literally minutes after he created it. It's awesome. If anybody wants to see any SOR swag and get some moo-woo stuff, over there on SOR at spacedoutradio.com. Go pick that stuff up. It's absolutely amazing. So back to the story. More than 60 pages on encounters that they 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 had a proposed redaction. So everything was actually kind of outlined in red. Should we redact this? Should we redact that? But it got released unaltered. And it was amazing that they did that. And so I actually have a few of the the here let me pop one up real quick some of the things that they had seen you know the grantavius max shirt i love it focus man we got a story to come on oh all right so all these documents revealed encounters and they said they were drones flying over six warships and this happened in march of 2019 so Everybody knows that the phenomenon of UAPs and everything and all these, you have people that are saying the, the, they're buzzing all these warships. You have other people that have been reporting on these saying, no, they're not what they call quadcopters and stuff like that. So there's a lot of these mysterious drones, so to speak, is what they're, they're saying. And some of these things get as close as 500 feet to the vessels. And they're doing all kinds of stuff. They're circling them. They're and even the vessels have tried to communicate with them at certain times, and they they don't ever communicate back. There's been people that have said no, you know, commanders of these ships saying no, these are just drones. Well, then there's other people going no, they're not drones. These things are just unidentified aerial phenomenon that's flying around these major warships that we have out in the ocean. They're not unexplainable. There's plenty of pictures of them. I'm actually looking at them right now because I'm still like enthralled with them. But the fact that they they literally had this redaction file that they threw out on the internet with all the redactions that they didn't redact anything. It's all just outlined in red and they threw it out there and people caught it. And that was what's gravy about it. People caught these things. So none of them look like drones to me. And oh, they have, so the file has encounters which were believed to be unknown drones, but most of them are truly unexplainable. I want to put up one picture if I can, if I can, Dave. Does this look like a drone to anybody? That is a triangle. Now, granted, this is night vision. That's why it's green. But this is a triangle. This is the classic triangle that people are seeing. This is the stuff that they're like, oh, these are drones. No, man, they're not drones. So out of all these redactions, and none of them got redacted, none of the photos got redacted, this is what they're seeing out there. Here's another one. This is the crosshairs of whatever sensor they have. These are not drones. They're coming with 500 feet of the vessels, and every single one of them, here's another one, and that looks like one of the triangles with the lights on this time. And here's another one. And this is also in, in the night vision scope that they have there. And uh, yeah, I would I really wish I would have caught that file before it got redacted. I would have loved to have seen exactly what was in there. I think we all would have liked to have seen it. And, you know, there's going to be somebody on Reddit who probably has grabbed it. And was quick on the draw. And there's always those people who uh, who are much faster than you and I on that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the fact that it got through, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty interesting. Very interesting. All right. Let's uh, move on to another story here. UFO expert says what? 
Oh, this is so this is actually tied into exactly what we were just talking about. So everybody knows Jeremy Corbell, correct? He's actually just recently started popping up all over the internet and doing more interviews with a lot of people. In fact, I've seen him on a couple of the podcasts today. So he's talking about at least a hundred craft that have swarmed these Navy fleets, these Navy warships, which is the exact same thing we're talking about just a minute ago, which was unredacted. Now there was an actual um, man. Let me think of his name. There's uh, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray. So he told Congress that no, these are just drones. According to Jeremy Corbell, he's like, no, I've talked to some of the seamen that were on those ships and some of the crew members that were there. And at least a dozen of them that watch these things fly around these ships are like, these aren't drones, man. They're not drones. There is one picture, and I didn't have it ready, unfortunately, that kind of looks like a drone. I'm actually looking for it, and I, I haven't been able to find it. It kind of looks like a quadcopter, and that's exactly what they're saying it is. So the U.S. The US government is, is taking the UFO seriously, though. I mean, but when you have a dozen crew members on these, on these you know, warships i guess they call it or whatever's out there whatever we're, we got out there and they're like no these have other world cape other worldly capabilities where they're doing 90 degree turns they're going from 500 feet from the ship up into the atmosphere one of them even disappeared underwater and 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 in fact i think they have video of that that's the one that came out not too long back so it's definitely when you have scott bray saying oh no they're just drones but then everybody else is saying no these are literal ufos uaps and and which have been verified by the pentagon i mean the pentagon has literally said no we have unidentified aerial phenomena up there we don't know what they are so why call them a drone they're not a drone and having one disappear in the ocean without a trace they can go from zero to a, a 80,000 or I think 80,000 feet in seconds. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And these things last for hours. That's the craziest thing. They're out in the middle of the ocean. You have battery operated drones. We don't have any nuclear operated drones out there, at least as far as I know, that America or any other you know country can make. And these things are out there doing this stuff and buzzing these warships for hours, like up to four or five hours at a time with lights flashing and buzzing around. And, and there's no capability that we have right now that can do that, at least to our knowledge. Well, that's the interesting part. As this story grows, we're going to learn more and more mm -hmm. moving on. We really are. And it's going to be amazing to see how this turns out. It's going to be very amazing to see because eventually those stories are going to come out. Eventually mm -hmm. those stories are going to have some answers and it's going to be quite the, quite the, how can we put it? The strangeness of when we see what's real, what's fake, what's ours and what's not. Well, realistically, all you got to do is answer one question. Who's the one to control of those objects? whether they're manned, unmanned, our drones, somebody else's drones. I mean, whoever's controlling it, if it's some guy in a booth with a couple of joysticks and chewing on a bubble gum, you know, that's us. But realistically, if uh, these things are moving in ways that physics cannot even understand, and I don't think it's ours. I really, even if it's a drone from a different planet or even from a different dimension, these things are doing stuff that we can't. So I, d I just want to know who the pilot is. That, that'll that's tell it. me everything. <laughs> that's it. That's all we need, man. Just tell us who the pilot is. Yeah. All right, final story tonight. Pentagon study led by researcher who believes in the supernatural. Obviously, mm -hmm. this story has to be about Troy Taylor. Yep. Or Travis Taylor. Travis Taylor, pardon me. Yep, yep, yep. Mr. Uh, PhD. Uh, this gentleman, so everybody knows about the big... 144 event when when they were supposed to give us everything about uaps and ufos so when that happened travis taylor says he was actually the lead scientist that was involved in that which was actually kind of interesting because i mean 
he had some extraordinary claims when he was on TV because this guy is a TV personality as well. Um, he is, he's certified, he's qualified. The guy's got a PhD in, let's see, uh, optical physics. He's got a PhD in aerospace and engineering. He's got five different science degrees. Uh, he's currently working in advanced propulsions. I mean, the guy is literally credentialed through and through. Like he really is credentialed. But it was interesting to find out that he was part of the UFO, the original UFO or a report that came out way back when. Now, this gentleman also recently went on George Knapp. And let's see, he, what did he say on George Knapp? Now, see, I'm getting my <laughs> stuff mixed up. But anyways, he was saying that he got, he, he, he met Jay Stratton, and uh, who's one of his DOD friends. And at the time, he was working in Army Aerospace or, or let me think. Gosh, I'm going to mess it all up. Is Army Space and Missile Defense Command. There we are. And he did that from 2007 till two months ago. And not only him, but his buddy just retired recently so he'd retired two months ago and his buddy retired recently but they're all just coming out with all I mean, this is a guy from ancient aliens and what's funny is i don't really watch ancient aliens so i i'm gonna have to go back and kind of run through those but both of those guys right now are in radiance technologies in huntsville alabama and uh, which is a base defense contractor and they're still working that stuff out but yeah this dude is uh he's part of the skinwalker ranch TV show and the whole gist of the story is this is a guy it's kind of like bringing Hollywood into you know the Hollywood science fiction when you have ancient aliens you got to kind of take some of the stuff they say with a grain of salt and this guy comes out and says oh yeah I was a lead scientist for this well then there was another gal I think her name is Susan I don't remember her last name it starts with a G group or something like that anyways she's what's off yes Susan. thank you so she actually said that he was a part of it. He wasn't the lead scientist, but he was there as one of the scientists on the on the scene when they were doing all the the UFO research and everything else, which is very very interesting. And a lot of his colleagues don't even like the guy. <laughs> In fact, there's some people that um, are anti UFO, you know, kind of bashers. They the people that don't want to believe in this stuff and they're just like no we're not going to follow this dude around it's it's he has a I, lot I, of credit I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because i mean here's a dude with three master's degrees a doctorate mm -hmm. and two bachelor's degrees mm -hmm. i mean you you're not a dummy no when you have that kind of education you're actually pretty smart yeah. okay and the idea that someone would question his knowledge, and there are people out there, like you said, mm -hmm. questioning his knowledge regarding this subject is unfathomable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But I understand, though, where people are a little upset and distrusting. Yeah. Because even, even I thought it last week, Grant, where I brought it up on the show, is he not double dipping? Mm -hmm. Is he not playing the the role of of hey, I want disclosure as much as you do. I'm here to help. But then on the flip side, he sure we find out that he's playing the government card as well as one of the top UFO scientists mm -hmm. at the Pentagon. Yep. And and you know what? If if we if we look at everybody here, dude. In regards to this, we've always said, I wonder how much influence the U.S. government has in ufology. Well, damn it, our top scientist now is that guy, yep. and it's outed. It is. I mean, he, he even has, he's got quite a few critics, and there's actually one, I'm not going to mention the author's name, and he's a, he's a UFO skeptic, and he's an author, and he quoted, and I'm looking at it now, and I because I had to look it up exactly what he said because I don't want to mess it up. He says because of the Pentagon's willingness to work with, 
with Taylor. Anyways, he's, he says, quote, I'm starting to see why the government's task force was so unsuccess unsuccessful in identifying its UAPs. You know, that's just something that's just it's upsetting because, I mean, you're an author and you, you might be a UFO skeptic. I don't know this guy's credentials at all, but you got a guy that has all these degrees and and yeah, he might church up what he did a little more than what he may actually been a part of. But at the same time, he still did it. <laughs> he was still there and then susan sits there and, and acknowledges it so i mean it's just uh it's kind of a give and take 